Morning, Vinyl Community. It's uh, Sunday morning, and you caught me in my living room this morning. Uh, I, I was thinking last night, instead of sitting on my computer uh, on, my, on my camera, I have my plug-ins to plug into my large screen TV, so if you catch me looking over to the left, please excuse me. Uh, I watched a video last night, and uh, it was something that Derek had put up. Somebody was responding to it, and uh, it was for interesting packaging on vinyl albums. And I dug out a few things that I have. Uh, actually, I've got several others, but I I kind of like these. I thought these were always pretty neat, so I think I'd show these. I just wanted to try it this way. That that's why I wanted to see, so I can get these all in there for you. Here's a Rolling Stones record. I've had this one for several years. It's an original pressing. Here's the inner sleeve. Hopefully the sun from my bay window don't gl and glare on the albums too much. But I have some pretty interesting things here. There's one there. Here's another one here. Another Rolling Stones. Some Girls. Album. It has the inside sleeve. It's a little... I mean, they did it first, but Foreigner, like Foreigner Records did it. And a few other good records. Besides it, and there's the back. Here's a classic. Somebody uh, posted one last night, but uh, I was looking at a video, but yeah, Cheech and Chong album, Los Lachachos album. That's really neat there, how they did that. Slides back in there. Another thing I can't strenuize enough, I was going to mention, yeah, when I looked at the front here, um, I've picked up albums here and there, and it, I tend to stray away from records that have somebody's name written on it. I kind of tend to stray away from that. I can't. I mean, as a vinyl owner, I'm sure a lot of those, a lot of people out there don't do that no more. <laughs> At least I've never done it. I've never put my name on it. Uh, there's a record store I usually go. Uh, it's a thrift store, but uh, the gentleman that sells the records, he's an older gentleman, so he collects himself. So, but he'll take a pencil. And he'll put just his initials on the inside with pencil of the price of the album. So that's not bad at all. You can just, you know, erase the pencil mark off. And here's another one here. Alice Cooper. Quiet Room, I believe. And you open it up. And you got the door here. And Alice is inside the quiet room right there. And you flip, flip it around here. And it's got the double doors. Tim and the Band. It's a neat album. And here's a really good one here. Your eye heaps, look at yourself at the mirror. In the front. These are just an original pressing. I went to a sale one day at a big flea market and a gentleman just got there with a truckload of records and he had asked me if I was a collector and I was like, a little bit. And he told me to go down to his truck in the parking lot and look in the back. He said he just got a bunch of stuff from an estate sale and lo and behold, he had the whole, basically pretty well, the whole Your eye heap collection. Somebody out there collected it. And a lot of it's an original double all, double gatefold. Some of it's uh, all imported from England. So that's pretty neat. And through the years, I picked this up. But that's the thing. Unfortunately, my uh, my so I used this, my mirror cylinder on this one. But unfortunately, mine had got sh lost in the shuffle for Rick Wakeman's No Earthly Connection. And there's I have a question about that, if anybody knows. Um, I read something up about it, but it says this album was exclusively made for tax purposes, I guess Rick had owned uh, owed uh, English taxes. I read an article on that before, but he did this album specifically for that. And I'm wondering, is that why they banned it for radio airplay, or is it because of the religious aspects on it? But anyway, yes. Yeah, so you take the sil the cylinder set back from the table and set it the album, and it basically what it does is it projects his it projects him setting his hand, uh, hands on the keyboard basically to the album. And then you have the back of the album, which shows his actual image in the disc reflection there. And not only that, being this is a specially banned radio airplay copy, here's the sleeve here, with all the lyrics from it, and it gives you a demonstration of how to do it on the back there. But anyway, here's your lyric sheet on the back. But anyway, this is a promotional copy, not for sale, special DJ version on the label. So I'm wondering about that as well. If anybody knows much about that, I looked. I was just looking this morning online about that, and there really, I didn't see any 
uh, for sale on Dislogs or any of the other sites that had a DJ copy. So I'm really wondering about that. I don't know if I came from a radio station or what. So yeah. Um, other than that, we got, I'm going to sit up here, Rick Wakeman's Journey to the Center of the Earth. This is a great album. Ashley Holt and the band, the English Rock Ensemble. But then, yeah, it's got the whole, it's got the whole book inside. Multiple pages. Which, that's another thing. Uh, it's quite a few people have been posting stuff like uh, movie soundtracks and stuff. It's got your original books like uh, Walt Disney's Black Hole. I got a bunch of different stuff like that. Close Encounters books. It's really neat stuff. And usually myself, I'm attracted to that. I mean, the special packaging, I really like that stuff. And the more stuff in them, the better. It always makes it more interesting. Here's one here. Uh, I went to a sale one day. One of my neighbors sold it to me. They had a yard sale, and they sold it to me. His wife said she had bought this when it first came out. And this is what was, uh, her original copy of Elton John. Elton John's got multiple albums with books and pages and everything in them. And this here, and it's an original press. There's the inside. There you go. And this has, like I said, it has all the original books. There's the vinyl side. And here's all the books with it. Which you have multiple books. Here's scraps. These are all basically photos of him and Bernie Ledden and the band. Multiple book. Here's one of all nothing but lyrics. It's a lyric book for the whole album. All the songs. And then you have the actual original poster that came with the album which is really neat. I thought that was nice. Which I need to frame this someday. Okay, fantastic. Brown Dirt Band. Oh, Brown Dirt Cowboy. Really neat poster. So, and then we have one of my favorite bands of all time. It is Jethro Tall, Thick as a Brick. This is the English Press. Actually, no, I think this is my Harvest version. They, after it made it big, after they broke out with this album, and Aqualung and all that, they uh, went over to Harvest as well. Well, Chrysalis Record basically leased it out just to make some money on them, basically, you know how that goes. So yeah, it's the multiple pages, because I looked at this last night. I got a Chrysalis copy, it's the original press. So yeah, but it's multiple pages, about five, six pages, newspaper. With the eloquent Ian Anderson, his writings in there, so that's neat. There's the back, and then we have Jethro Tull's. I got this from my uh, brother's good friend. It's an original pressing that he bought it when it first came out. Jethro Tull's Passion Play album. Which opened up the Passion Play, and it has the full of the full play and show inside booklet for the show that night. It's really neat. And then you go on to this. That's why I kind of set my camera up like this, too. I wanted to set it up. If you want, I'll, if you don't mind, I'm going to turn it down just a touch so you can see this because this is really neat. If you've never seen this album, this is great. This is one of the best on uh, Jethro Tull, at least albums that they did on album work, too, as well. It was Living in the Past. This here, Smoltz Boy. I got this uh, from my brother's uh, girlfriend. Her father gave her collection to her. And she had two copies of this, so she gave it to me one year for Christmas. But yeah, it's uh, Jethro Tull's Living in the Past. But yeah, it's got some really neat artwork in it. Original pictures of Ian Anderson in the band. Let me scoot this up here a little bit. I'm just trying to keep it in the camera for you so you can see all the photos in this. This is a really great album. Of the band in the early days. Anderson, Sir Martin Barr, and all the guys. That's a really neat album. And it's like basically kind of the greatest hits on the first disc, and then on the second second disc, it's live. I think they did it at Albert Hall in England. The second half of the album is all live. It's all still greatest hits. Of the, like the first three to four albums. Everything from this was all the way up to... Uh, this is actually right before Aqualung that they did this. Here's the live disc. Uh, and this is all originally on printed on Chrysalis Records. It's an original print. But And I have several other unique packaging albums, which I'll show with my full collections of 
other albums that I do have. But I right, thank you for watching. If you like, please comment, vote, and subscribe.